A few years back, I was reading about Greco-Roman religion in books that when there's a technical term, it's translated into English with the ancient Greek in parenthesis. But I couldn't sound out the words. So I learned the letters, and that was interesting. So I bought this book, and it was interesting, and I stuck with it. Now, after a number of years of dabbling, I can pick up a gospel or Xenophon and read it more or less fluently. Not perfect. I'm not a hotshot. I'm a hobbyist. I'm a lot slower than in English, but I can do it. I can read Greek text in Greek and understand it in Greek. If you are starting out with Greek, some of the stuff I've come across can help you to learn to do that. Let's start with understanding what goals are available to you. Ancient Greek is a dead language, and that makes how you use it different from for a living language. You use a modern language by going there and talking to people. You don't have to be good. You don't have to know much. I will buy a banana. And the nice man says to the foreigner, that's not a banana, that's a kiwi. You laugh and say, I will buy a kiwi. You met someone, you bought something, you learned something. For a modern language, any level of knowledge can be useful and fun. In an ancient language, there is no one to talk to. You won't meet colorful locals or buy exotic kiwi fruits. You will read old books. That's it. Read old books. These green books are the famous Loeb Classical Library. Several hundred ancient Greek texts in Greek with an English translation on the facing page. These are not easy books. This is not I will buy a Kiwi Greek. Here's a translation of a typical paragraph. Pause the video and read it on your own. Notice how the focus of attention bounces around. This is one sentence. Here it is in Greek. One sentence. If your goal is to read old Greek books, this is the sort of sentence you start with. It takes takes a long time to get here. Here's you. Here's Greek books. Why don't you just pick one up and start reading? Well, because between you and Greek is a mountain. There's a new alphabet, lots of new words. The big deal is what they call grammar. Greek is heavy on word endings. These are some of the pages and pages of tables of word endings in a popular first-year Greek book. Every noun has at least eight different endings. Every verb has several hundred different endings. You can't read Greek sentences until you understand those endings and how they work together. The big thing between you and Greek is Grammar Mountain. What do you get out of crossing Grammar Mountain? When you get to the other side, you can begin to understand how Greek sentences work. First year courses in Greek are basically about teaching you that grammar. More on that later. For now, let's talk about the choices you have for crossing Grammar Mountain and reading Ancient Greek. First choice, how much Greek are you going to learn? One way to read ancient Greek is to not read Greek at all. Just read the English. All these old Greek books are easy to find translated into English. So all the time you spend learning Greek, you're not spending that time to read these books. You're spending it to read them in Greek when the English translation is right there on the opposite page. I'm just saying. The next level goal is to learn the letters so you can sound out words you come across in your reading. Musteria, Sotor. It's fun, not a lot of effort, worth your time. Lots of places on the interwebs will teach you how. Another way to read Greek is to use an interlinear Greek text with English translations under each Greek word. They often come with extra help, like transliteration of the Greek word into English letters and parsing, which means specifying the grammar of each word. So on this page, in the bottom left corner, proskuneseis is parsed V, F, I, A, 2, S. Verb, future tense, indicative mood, active voice, second person, singular. Interlinears are best when you know the alphabet and how to sound out words, but you still need help as you learn to parse forms and figure out the odd ways Greek puts sentences together. You can find a handful of classical texts in interlinear form, all out of print but online. As far as I know nowadays, the only books you can buy new in interlinear form are Bibles, uh, the New Testament, and the Septuagint Old Testament. Or your goal may be to read annotated Greek texts, Greek at the top of each page with vocabulary and grammar help at the bottom. Notice there's no English translation here. Annotated versions are available for the Bible and for big name classical authors like Lucian and Xenophon. Reading annotated texts is probably not a final goal for most people. It's more likely to be a step on the way to fluent reading. You've climbed Grammar Mountain and you're heading down the other side. 
If you prefer your annotated texts online, there's the excellent and free Perseus website. Hundreds of Greek texts, including the New Testament, all online. You can have the English translation open or hidden. The great thing is every single Greek word is linked to its parsing. The same VFIA stuff as in the interlinear. Just click and there's the parsing. Click again and it's linked to the words entry in the standard excellent ancient Greek English dictionaries. Perseus is very handy. Another choice is lobes or their equivalent. I'm not the first person to notice that the surviving ancient Greek texts are so challenging that most of us amateurs have trouble ever getting to the point we can read them confidently in Greek. That's why the Loeb Classical Library prints its books in two languages, Greek on the left, English translation on the right. If you're setting out to learn Greek, I think a Loeb level of competence is a reasonable goal. Read well enough to understand most of the text. Be happy from from time to time to check the English. Second choice, how to read Greek sentences. First option is to read Greek the same way you read English. Start at the beginning and read each word as it comes, left to right. The Lord your God you will worship, and Him alone you will serve. You read in Greek, you understand in Greek, you're thinking in Greek. Your other choice is to think in English. Not everyone uses their Greek to read extended passages. Christians may want to study just a few verses to use Greek that way. You don't need to do first pass, left to right sight reading. You can just pick a sentence, find the verb, find the subject, find the object, and then decode it all into English. I know this sounds like a pointless, tiny distinction, but decoding really is a very different skill from sight reading. When you sight read left to right, you have to recognize each word in real time, parse it in real time, verb, future tense, indicative mood, active voice, second person singular in real time, and fit it into the developing sentence in real time. This is hard and it takes a lot of practice. Decoding is slower and easier. For me personally, the downside is that ultimately you're still thinking in English. So why not just read the English page of the lobes? I think the thing decoders like about their method is its preciseness. Decoding lets you think carefully about the meaning of each word. Some folks go as far as to diagram the grammar of each sentence. The practitioners I've come across have all been Christians working for a deeper understanding of God's Word. I've never done this, but if you're interested, you can buy how-to books and software to do this. I've seen ads for, I think, the entire New Testament in diagram form. You can also choose not to have a goal, nothing to prove, nowhere to go. Enjoy whatever level you're at while you're there because for you, Greek is interesting and fun. One thing a typical course in ancient Greek will not do is equip you to read primary manuscripts. Here's a world famous manuscript, Codex Sinaiticus, Mark 16.8. This is not a document you sit down with for a leisurely read. I don't think anyone reads manuscripts. I think specialists transcribe them. This is a specialized academic skill. Good. And your goal is to cross Grammar Mountain or not. And you're thinking about whether you want to read left to right or to decode and translate. Before you get started, there's another goal for you to choose. Which version of ancient Greek should you study? Which dialect should you study? If you're interested in the Iliad, the Odyssey, the Homeric hymns, and a few other old archaic poems, you're going to want to study Homeric Greek. I myself haven't done this, and I don't know what books you should use. The best I can do is say, from what I've seen, it seems pretty different from other later Greek. If your interest is in non-Homeric Greek outside the Bible, you're going to want to study Attic Greek. You probably know that Athens was a city located in the region called Attica, and that Greek written in Athens in the 3 and 400s BC is called Attic Greek. Plato, Aristotle, Euripides, Thucydides. But there's more to it. Athens' golden age ended. It was conquered by Macedon, then by Rome. But the language of its classical period stayed the literary standard for hundreds of years. So in the second century AD, 500 years after Euripides, guys writing Greek in Alexandria, Egypt, deliberately wrote with the vocabulary and style that mimicked classical Athens. 
what that means for you is learning Attic Greek will let you read most of the green lobes. If your interest is in the Bible, you've been told that the New Testament was written in Koine Greek. Koine is an adjective that means common. Now, there's more going on here than differences in dialect. It is true Koine is different from Attic, but the differences are not as big as people make you think. The Athenians said Thalata, Koine says Thalassa. Wow. The difference between Attic and Koine is not the basic grammar. That stayed the same. The big difference is the amount of grammar. Greek simplified. So if you learn Attic Greek, it's not that you learn stuff that's different from the Bible. It's that you learn grammar and vocabulary that's not in the Bible at all. So why do people emphasize the difference between Koine and Attic? I think what's going on is that lots of people want Greek for the New Testament, but only for the New Testament. For them, the effort to learn the optative mood or dual noun declensions, grammar that doesn't appear in the New Testament, is wasted time. And if you're only ever going to read the Bible, you don't see the point in learning the huge specialized vocabularies of Xenophon or Lucian or Longus. As a Greek learner, this matters to you. The big difference is not that Attic grammar is way different from Koine grammar. It's that there's more of it. But the basic forms, the basic grammar is pretty much the same. That means that even if all you ever want to read is the New Testament, you can still learn from textbooks of Attic Greek. And some of those are very good. Just skip the duals and the optatives and, and you'll do fine. If your interest is in the New Testament, I think a low level of competence is a reasonable goal. Read well enough to understand most of the text. Be happy from time to time to check the English. You can buy versions of the New Testament set up exactly for that sort of reading. Why, here's an excellent one right here. Next time, Greek is different from English.